what's up everybody it's another candle um, today I want I'm doing a quick video to actually add some clarification onto an issue um, and one of my videos I'm not sure which one I can't remember maybe it's whenever I'm talking about abortion but I, I can't remember I mentioned how my mother was put through a temptation to essentially, you know, to abort me. Now, the thing is that I want to clarify. She did not have this thought herself. Someone was telling her that she should. She immediately rejected that person's idea. Um, and she had brought this to my attention. And I do understand why, because, you know, obviously, you know, she, um, she hadn't, she never had an inward temptation about this. She, it was an outward temptation, which is something that it's not your thoughts. And I'll give an example of an outward temptation, meaning it is not coming out of your character and honestly, when you resist an outward temptation, it is a boon to your character. It shows what you have come through to resist said temptation. The biggest example, the easiest example to use, Jesus in the wilderness. The Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. And it is very specifically using the word tempted. Now, do you think at any any point in the time, whenever Satan asked Jesus, uh, not asked, he actually ordered Jesus to turn the stone into bread, do you think Jesus was tempted to do that? Do you think he sat there and thought, hmm, I can do that, maybe I should. No, I don't believe he did. I believe the devil ordered him to do that. And I believe personally that Jesus immediately responded out of Deuteronomy. For man shall not live on bread alone, but out of every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. And I believe he did the exact same thing in each other instance that he was tempted by Satan while he was in the wilderness. The difference of inward temptation would be, uh, okay, so I, I quit smoking weed a few, uh, few, I think it's honestly like two months back now, and if without anyone around, anyone speaking to me, all of a sudden I got the feeling like, man, I would really like to smoke some weed right now, that is an inward temptation. Now, I do understand, you know, why my mom would say that it is a question of character if that was an inward temptation. But the thing is, is I want to explain, temptation is temptation, either one way or the other. Whether it is inwards or outwards, it still follows under the same category of temptation. One of them, you are being tempted from an outward source, most of the times through a person. Could be through a video. Could be through a book. But on the other hand, inward temptation sometimes can come from your own desires. But many times it is driven through whisperings of our adversary. I think I just literally said adversary. Adversary. Sorry. Inner whisperings of our adversary. And he can plant ideas in our minds to tempt us. That is 100% possible. But like I said, does that damage your character at all? Either way, it, does, it doesn't matter whichever way you put it. No, it does not damage your character in, in one way or another. And um, the fact that if you did resist temptation then your character is intact. It doesn't matter if you did have those inner whisperings. Your character is still intact. 
because you resisted the temptation one way or the other. I, as a male, I have many, many temptations. You know, good grief if, uh, you know, lust has always been one of the major temptations I've had to deal with. And that is both outwards and inwards because there are some times that, you know, you just get this thought in your mind and you're like, oh man, boy, I could go watch some porn right now. And sure, you could, but do you resist that temptation? Because if you do resist it, then your character is intact, regardless of if you had that thought or not. Your character is intact. And then there's the outward temptation of, you know, uh, maybe I see a, a, an attractive woman and, you know, she's, uh, she's wearing an outfit that has her cleavage showing and stuff like that. You have the temptation to look. And the thing is, is whenever you fall to one part of that temptation, the rest of it gets easier to fall towards because immediately your mind is like, well, hey, I've already done the first part. I could just go ahead and do the rest. You can go hit that girl up or imagine doing things with her in your mind, you know, what have you. You guys know what I'm saying. That is how temptation works. But specifically, like I mentioned just a second ago, and my pastor also talked to me about this last Sunday because my temptation, I would think more often than any other issue, is anger. It is so easy for me to get angry. It's so easy for me to fall to anger because it feels so much more natural than every other temptation. You feel vindicated about what you might be angry about. Sorry it looks like I'm looking off to this direction. I'm looking dead at the phone, but the camera on the phone's right here. So... Sorry about that. I'll try to make sure I'm looking right at you. <laughs> um, but like he was telling me, when it comes to temptation, if you can get victory over that temptation one time, then the next time it comes up, it'll get easier. And the next time it comes up, it'll get easier. Um, I can list actually another um, example of temptation in the Bible. Peter. When he was tempted to deny Jesus three different times. Why was it, why was it three times, huh? You ever think about that? Why was it three times and not just, you know, two or just one time that he was tempted and fell to denying Jesus? Jesus, denying even knowing him. Excuse me. I think it was because Jesus wanted to solidify to him the point of temptation and how it will attack you multiple times, not just once. I can almost guarantee you that most of us you know, have very few situations where we've been tempted to do something and we do it. And then afterwards we're like, whew, you know what? I'll never do that again. Never ever. And I'll never be tempted to do it again either. That's just, <laughs> it's honestly just not the case. You know, um, there are times whenever that does happen. Yes. I'm not saying that it's not possible. I'm just saying it's, it's very seldom that you'll be tempted to do something only one time. I want to add some information onto this because um, my mom obviously seemed a little bit upset about it because I guess she, uh, because I guess where she had misunderstood the way that I was presenting the information. I was tempted with my son internally, not externally internally to abort my son. I want to put that out there because I want to be able to show you and mostly be able to show her that I am not afraid of people's judgment on my character based on the fact that I have made mistakes or I have thought about making mistakes because we all think about doing something that is wrong. Whether or not we do it is the important thing. The temptation itself is not a sin. Having the thought is not a sin. It's what you do with it. That is the sin. Yes, 
I was tempted to abort my child, my beautiful, wonderful son. Probably the third greatest gift that God ever gave me outside of being saved, being born in general, and being you know, allowed to live on this world. <clears throat> Sorry, I get a little choked up when I talk about this. And then my son. I was tempted to abort him because I was living in a van in the winter. I was homeless. That temptation was very real to me because of the fact that if I, if things didn't change, if I didn't trust God and God wasn't taking care of me, then that child would have been born into a homeless situation. And he would have either been taken from me by CPS he would have been given to one of my family and I wouldn't get to see him near as much as I as I do now. Or he would have been living out of a vehicle for the first few months, possibly a year, out of his life. So was I tempted to abort my own son? Yes, I was. And I'm not afraid to say that. Because the thing is, is while I may have been tempted to do it, I did not. And that is what is most important. Temptation on its own, that's not a sin. Acting upon that temptation, that is the sin. Do not be ashamed that you are tempted. Because in your temptations, you are tried by the adversary. You are tried and tested by the enemy, the devil, and his many workers. But if you do not do that sin, no shame to you. No shame at all. As I said before, a boon to your character it is that you fought through temptation and you did not do it, whether it is internal or external. By anybody that might not know, uh, I'm sure most of you do, but a boon is essentially an advantage, an addition it's a good thing. Guys, that's pretty much all I've got on this subject. And um, I really appreciate my mom bringing it up to me because it, it did make for a, a good video idea and something that does need to be explained. If you guys are confused, I personally, I, I, I went to the Bible first and foremost whenever it came to figuring out, <clears throat> sorry, when it came to figuring out um, what to think about temptation, about the issue of temptation. I also, whenever I was speaking to my mom, I went to the Oxford Dictionary, I went to the Strong's Concordance Definition, and I read the uh, Thayer's Definition. I don't even know who Thayer's is, but it was there. And honestly, it just seemed to affirm to me what I already figured the Bible was telling me about it. And so if you guys want to, you can go look those up in uh, Strong's Concordance and the Oxford Dictionary. And, you know, form your own opinion on it. Don't, don't always take my word for things. I could easily be wrong about things. I don't personally believe that I am wrong about this I, because of what the Bible has taught me. I do believe that this is correct, that this is what temptation is and how temptation works and its various facets. I hope this video has been a blessing to you guys. Um, with this video, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know in the description, I'm going to try something new. My mom had let me know that there are many, essentially, algorithm-breaking words that you can put in your description of your videos. And I'm going to test that out on this video and see how it works just so I can possibly try to reach more people out there, hopefully reach out to the lost with some of my videos. And I think this one would be a pretty good one. Temptation is a good thing to go over because remember, through temptation we fall to sin. And death is the penalty for sin. But through Christ, we are redeemed. Our sins are forgiven. We are covered. There will be many writings 
that God will see about what we've done in our life and, you know, the sins that we've committed. But whenever you accept Jesus, there is only one thing that God sees whenever he looks at your receipt. And he sees the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. You guys keep that in mind. Share this video out to people that you think might be struggling with this issue. Put a like on the video if you do like it. If you agree, just hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button if you want to see videos more like this one. I'll see you guys later.